Hello everyone! We got some uh, story, I guess. The secret between the lines. With the truth and inference kind of thing. And since the truth and inference essence for Nightwatch, Fool's Gold, and Puppeteer will be out next week. As you can see though, uh, the Hello Kitty crossover is here. Some real characters. Um, I did get them. I also got the Prospector skin, and I actually ended up getting a uh, Fural Ladies S tier skin at 122 pulls. So I will show them towards the end. But I thought we'd get into this. I'm, I think I'll miss some, some, some of the stuff because I always end up pressing these when I know I shouldn't, and so I, the, start, the story started, and I don't know if I stopped it in time. Uh, so to re-see it. But we'll, I guess we'll find out. Oh, I did. Nice. Three months have passed since Mr. Inference took on Mr. Worthington's case and boarded the Isambard. The Isambard has long since returned to port, yet I failed to find Mr. Inference among the passengers disembarking. Only a letter was sent to me in familiar handwriting and tone, briefly explaining his, his plans. Oh, so he never came back. He didn't co go back to the where they where they go. Mr. Inference indicated in the letter that he had another urgent case to attend to and entrusted me to report the completion of our current endeavor to Mr. Worthington. At the end of the letter, he advised that should I encounter any insurmountable issues, I was to seek help from his friend, Officer Jose. Ooh. In the interim, several minor cases have come my way, all easily resolved without much ado, to the satisfaction of the respective clients. The remainder reminder of my time or the remainder of my time is rather dull, filled with reading newspapers that only Mr. Inference might be interested in, as I await further word from him. Daily News Crotal's Chain's final tour is set to begin. Croto? We're gonna see Croto again? I am not particularly fond of theatrical performances. Rather, it is the cryptograms hidden in newspaper su supplements that captivate my interests. To ponder, deduce, and unravel enigmas, this is the unique stage upon which the detective performs. I'm going to read this real quick. Crotal, uh, acclaimed leading lady Miss Croto and her trope are poised to grace our fair city's St. Mark's Theatre for a week-long performance of Crotos Chain, the magnum opus that catapulted Miss Croto to, to fame. It is reported that this will be the final performance of Miss Croto's famed work, but fear not, for beyond these final curtains, Miss Croto will embark on a collaboration with a renowned playwright, birthing a new masterpiece tr transcending her last. Tickets will be available for sale at the St. Mark's Theater box office starting next Monday. Stay tuned for more information. It's a good thing I wrote it right. I did that. V S W I. Caesar cipher. One of the earliest forms of encryption in which each letter of the text is shifted by a set value known as the key to reveal the message. The secret lies just four steps away. Interesting. Complete one question each day to earn rewards. Start. The Caesar cipher is one of substitution whereby the prescribed letters must be shifted forward or back by a fixed number to obtain a solution. Thus, to decrypt one merely shifts the ciphered text and reversed by the same count to reveal the original message. The secret hinted at likely refers to the encrypted message while four steps away suggests that the cipher's shift number is four. Forward or back in the alphabet shifting V four places forward results in R while shifting it four positions backwards gives Z. Rose. Gives 
R and Z. So then it will have to be rose. Because it can't be fish and it can't be true. Rose. I love this already because I love roses. Perhaps to enlighten its reader, the paper has adjoined a compilation of interesting facts near the solutions sections. Today's column lists of rose symbolize symbolisms across various cultural contexts. For instance, the rose is often likened to a secret from which many of a meaning has since been derived. Whether using an inverted rose to symbolize something hidden or as a sign to others to maintain confidentiality to keep their silence, these symbols all stem from the same concept, secrets. Love it already. Or by the scribe letter, must be shifted forward or backwards. Answer, rose. Nice. That's it. So I guess that's it for today. It looks like we're going to have five or four more records. Um, not sure if it's, oh, I think it did say every day, right? Yeah. Okay. So, I guess, um, I will not be uploading this right away. I'm gonna do the, f the five records, put it in all together in one video, and then we'll be good to go. So, that probably means it'll be done by Tuesday. I guess technically for me it would be a little bit more later because I am starting this technically on Friday, uh, Thursday, Thursday, not Friday, Thursday, because I don't get on the game right when maintenance is done. So I probably could have had record two done already if I had uh, done the story earlier, but I was at work. So I'm always going to be like probably one day behind, but that's okay. Um, I will show off the skins now. Actually, wait, we'll see this real quick. Karomi's notebook. Olita's manners, summer fair. Woohoo, I can't wait. I made some super awesome gifts for you all. How do we transport this many? Oh, put them all in Karomi's spaceship. Don't forget to tell my melody to come along. That's cute. <laughs> oh, look how cute. Oh my gosh, the portrait frame is actually kind of adorable. I definitely want this one. Ah. Okay. Oh, and we can get one of these for free? Oh, you know what? That actually helps a lot. During the spaceship's plan. Got it. Cute. Well, I'm kind of glad that we get one of these for free because I almost wasn't going to buy them. But since we can get one for free... Then I rather I can do that and then buy buy the, whichever one. We'll do that since we have the three. Oh. Oh, I think that's lucky that I got a portrait right away. Wow. Not bad. I was not expecting to get a portrait right away. But that's, that's actually pretty cool. There's a shot. Oh. Anyways. Now we can show off the skins. There's the first one. Ta-da! There he is in all his glory. Actually, I didn't even realize he had burn marks on his side. I mean, it makes sense. He's got one on his face and then on his arms. But I don't think I really, like, actually noticed. Um, well, you can't really see his side unless it's like this. But on his arms, I don't think I ever noticed. I don't know if he's ever had a skin with short sleeves like this. Um, I don't know if it's still a thing, but I saw... On somebody else's thing, that if you use this, you have the the tentacles come up like that, and you like look at him from like a certain angle. Let me see if I can. Oh, I guess they fixed it. Huh. 
Huh. There was a thing where, like, you could go up here, turn your screen, and then, like, the tentacles would <laughs> make him shirtless. But they probably, it looks like they fixed it. Yeah. Norn. Oh, well. We tried. He looks good. I like him. Very nice. Can't wait to try him out in match and see his accessory because I don't really think I actually saw his accessory. Alright, well there's the first one. Here she is. Shabam! Yes! Dude, I love this skin. She is so pretty and I freaking just love the different shades of green that she has on her plus the like, little peacock. Can we do that? Gorgeous. She's a, she's a, so pretty. I cannot wait to play as her because I have yet to do so. Though by the time this video comes out, I will probably have played a few games as her. We will see. And there she is. Oh, she's so cute. She is so cute. Look at those ears. Oh, they move. Oh, they're flopsies. Oh, they're flopsies ears. That's adorable. I think they could take a pretty good character for her. Look at that. Look how fluffy those ears are. She looks cute. Very cute. I think it matches pretty well. Even though she is on the more tomboy side. I kind of like that they kind of gave her like... Oh yes, look at that. Oh my gosh, she's so pretty. She's so pretty. Look at her. Oh, her hair is like in the shape of a rose. Oh, I freaking love that. Oh my gosh, and I have like the, the snake accessory on her, but it fits because it's purple. Look at her. She is so pretty. Look at that. Oh yeah, I forgot that there's effects. Um, she sits. There we go. I love it. I love it. Uh, definitely had a feeling that she was gonna be Karomi, so when that came out, it was like, yes, we knew it. By we, I mean me and Mevox, because we were talking about it. And we kind of had a feeling that Karomi would be Bloody Queen, especially because in some of the merch for Sanrio, they actually did have Bloody Queen with Karomi. She's cute. I like her. I really like this outfit. It's really pretty. It's like a gothic Lolita, but not a Lolita in a way. It's just gothic. But there we go. That works better. She's cute. Anyways, I will see you guys next time. Bye! <laughs> Daily news. As swiftly times fly, I still recall the plea. Hebe? Heeb once sent me. I assume the friends I made within the halls of Lonesome Moon have now completed their studies. Meanwhile, I, on the detective's path, press on. Compared to Mr. Inferences, Inference, I still need to accumulate more experience. My LHB and LYOVH. We shall tether the beginning to the end, for the inception is also the terminus. Alright, let's get started then. This suggests a different enc encryption method involving character substitution. Together with the statement, the inception is also the terminus. This hint probably indicates a change of the sequence in which the letters should be read. Could it be the Atbash at cipher? In the Atbash cipher system, the alphabet's order is reversed. The last letter represents the first, and the other letters follow this manner. In the reverse alphabet, I is the ninth letter from the end, meaning the first letter of the answer should be the ninth from the end in the actual alphabet. It should be R. That is, I have never heard of that one before. At bash something. 
I think we had, I think we, we know what ILHB is, right? That would be Rose. Wait. I... <laughs> okay, well, it's either Rune Arcana or it's Rose Noble. Okay, I don't want to do a 50-50 guess on this. Atbash Cypher. That's so cool. So I is the ninth. Oh, I guess we can do H. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So that's eight. <laughs> Z, Y, X, W, B, U, T, S. So it is Rose Nobles. The solution to this puzzle is a story I've, I've encountered before. Legend has it that an alchemist once promised a king an, an endless supply of gold. In exchange, the king was to assist the alchemists in reclaiming their lost lands. The king provided lead and tin, and the alchemists transmuted them all into pure gold. This gold was then used to mint new coins with a rose emblem known as the Noble Roses. Interesting. I love that this whole thing is just about roses. <laughs> or at least has the name Rose in it. That was really interesting. Actually, that's pretty cool. That was V-S-W-I. How- Why does it feel like I know that I-L-H-V was Rose? I feel like I have seen that somewhere. I don't remember where. It might have been in another puzzle that I saw. And I, it just kind of, like, long-term memory kind of thing just kind of clicked and was like, that one's Rose. But I had to make sure. I had to make sure because we had two that started with R. <laughs> But anyways, we've got th three left. Tomorrow will be another day, another riddle. See you next time. Bye. Daily news. Whether for the sake of accuracy or sensationalism, the report lists an invitation roster of dubious veracity. I recognize veracity? Veracity? I feel like that's a different spelling from what I normally see. Well, I think of veracity. Anyways, I recognize some of the names as being former passengers of the Isambard. I didn't get to read the note. No, I didn't get to read it. Okay, this one's interesting. This constant alternation of two basic symbols, it seems to be Morse code. Oh, that's what that is. It's a very interesting way to do Morse code. Morse code consists of dots and dashes. First, one must confirm which symbols these two shapes correspond to, then decide each character according to the telegraph code table. Without any additional hints, I can only strive to match the shapes to dots or dashes to solve this puzzle. The first is three of the same symbol. Is that an O or an S? A simple and practical code that uses dots and dashes to represent letters and numbers. In practice, th these signals are often manifested in other forms such as var varying durations of sound. <coughs> S or O? Ah, I see. So the next one's the same symbol but with a star right afterwards. So it would be either N, S, N, or it could be A. So S, A, or no. S A or O N. Hmm. Okay, well, it has to be Sam then because it was either S or O that it started with. So S A. Good day, I was actually pretty good at doing that. So it's Sam. 
a simple riddle with a, with a simple answer. Unlike word puzzles that require the interpretation of hidden message meanings, Morse code can be quickly deciphered once the symbols are recognized and matched. That is true. That is very true. I sadly forgot to do yesterday. Um, so I'm technically supposed to be on day four, but I missed a day. So, yeah. Sam F.B. Morse. Interesting, okay. So I guess that's day three. Sadly, I don't get to skip to day four. I use inspiration or I use something to be able to do day four. So I gotta wait. Actually, I think I technically missed two days. I don't think I did yesterday. And technic- Oh, wait, no, no, it's almost ten. So that means it's almost twelve. So I'll be able to do day four in like a few minutes. Anyways, catch you guys next time. Bye. Ooh. Daily news. We're going to read this first since I missed the other one. Recently, the Crystal Palace fireworks show <coughs> has once again... <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Has once again become the focus of citywide attention due to its technical innovations and outstanding creativity. Guided by his conversations with the esteemed author, Miss Browning, pyrotechnician fireworks guy weaves elements from her best-selling accounts, The Voyage of Oceanus, into the display, allowing all visitors to encounter fantastical sea creatures amidst an ethereal ocean of smoke. Interesting. The outcome of the Isambard's voyage remains ambiguous, neither a clear success nor failure. Despite its mid-journey detour and failure to achieve the planned scientific, scientific objections, the passengers' fantastical descriptions of Oceanus have garnered widespread attention, reminiscent, reminiscent of the maritime disaster of a quarter century past. There's no information about where Mr. Inference has gone to complete his current case, and I have yet to receive any news from him. I adeptly turn to the cryptogram column, seeking solace in its challenge. The puzzle presents a series of patterns identical save for their hues. I like that because it's a rose. It shall be cast into Midnight's Forge, flames enshrouding its form. Was each one from, like, no, because Morse code... I think we did do Morse Code in one of the olden times. We have been talking about a rose too, so it makes sense that a picture of a rose finally shows up. Are well, yes, all the all the stories are connected. It's just it's funny to like see them coming back. Cause I was about to see like I was about to be like, are the stories connected? And it's like, uh, yeah, they are. We are literally just talking about it. They talked about Golden Rose. They talked about uh, fireworks or the paranormal detective one with the hauntings and uh, Amethyst and uh, prin or Princess. <laughs> Lady Bella's sister, Amethyst Duchess, that's her name, with all that good stuff. And then they talked about Oceanus and... I don't know, this whole thing, the sword with the rose, makes me think of the D&D &D one. And I think we did talk about the one with, uh, the story time one with, I think that's the one with Monstrous Bird, because it was like you was a Monstrous Bird. You know that, or maybe we'll get to it, maybe it'll be day five that it talks about that one. Anyways, complete one questions each day to, oh, we can go. This pattern password requires the correct color combination to be found with an identical graphics based on the hints provided. Red rose, black sword. The hint points to a form of hier hierarchy with the flames placed above the subject it. Perhaps this corresponds to the rose above the sword in the image sword rose rose sword fire is often symbolized by red and the sword below shall be cast into midnight's forge probably means it shall be cast into midnight's forge 
Wouldn't it be option three then? Just based on how that looks, the, ro the rose is red and the sword is gray. So option three. Yes, okay. However, this inscription is particularly fascinating. <laughs> Kinda is. I'm aware that certain es esoteric organizations employ similar screening methods. They use words I have never seen or never heard of. Unless I hear the pronunciation, I'm not sure. But like, it's like something I've never like seen. They send out multiple letters at once, each containing different information and markings, with only the correctly cut marked ones revealing the true message. Hmm. Hands in the form. Flames covering the subject. It. Which means, inter interesting. I like this though. I might have to take a screenshot of that and use it somewhere, like as like a little sign, like little emblem somewhere, I don't know. It looks, I really like how that rose looks. Anyways, that's it for now. See you next time. Daily News, Zenaida's Posthomos work. I don't know how to pronounce that. Work published. I'm going to read the daily news as you can see. The much anticipated posthumous, posthumous work of authoress Zenaida, meticulously curated by her editor, was officially published this week. Within its pages lie a plethora of previously unpublished manuscripts and fresh tales, making it a fitting tribute to her literary literary legacy in the eyes of the readers across the nation. The publisher plans to host a series of books, clubs, and literary seminars, allowing all who cherish the work of Ms. Zenaida's to dwell deeper into her final literary world. Interesting. I was very horrible at the beginning there because I just could not pronounce that one word that messed me up. Um, before I continue on reading as well, uh, in my last video, which will be connected to this one, I was talking about how I thought they would, um, talk about the succubus case, only to find out when I went back and I read the daily news, which I did pause so that you guys could read it, that one, the last daily news was actually actually talks about that about the uh the dinner and whatnot and just about succubus and all that good stuff so that did pass and i do like that we're rereading or re being told and re-seeing the uh old uh truth and inference stories um so as you can see this one's about the D and D one because it's about uh, Miss Zenaida, and she was who we were talking about last last time. So the tales I once read at Castle Zenaida, do they persist as fragments, or have they been granted their conclusion? Lost in thought, I continue browsing the puzzle column, planning to purchase a book on the subject when time permits. Sebco, this, this cyclin, cyclical, cyclical, I don't know, cascade barks the first ascent upon the stairs beyond the gate of four steps awaits. Oh, let's get that started. Here, two encryption methods are used in conjunction. The cyclical cascade. In the first half refers to the at bash cipher, while the number four in the gate of four steps hints at the shift number in the Caesar cipher. Oh jeez. First, according to the rules of the at bash cipher, Sebco can be decoded from the reverse alphabet to the first set of original letters, X V Y X L. Then, based on the, the shift number four, we can decrypt XVYXL to reveal 
María. I want to say it's truth just because of the fact that there's C and C. And Maria does not have another M in it, so it can't be Maria. And Abyss does not have an extra A. Because it's C B C E B C O, which is the X V Y X L. So I want to say it's truth. Yes. Truth, like Lady Truth. I know that Zedida's favorite puns, word wordplay and metaphors, the appearance of this word puzzle on the same page as her posthumous work may be a coincidence. Posthumous? Post hummus? Hummus. <laughs> Posthumous work may be a coincidence, but I see it as a serendipitous serendipitous oh my gosh. I cannot read. I don't like reading words like that. An encouragement from fate. Like, I I can I know how most of the time when when it's like words like this, I do know how to pronounce it. It's just like as I'm reading it, my brain just decides, yeah, you're gonna say this wrong or doubt yourself that if you said it wrong or not. Upon folding the newspaper, I discovered that today's post brought not only this. Per periodical but also a letter i excitedly opened the envelope thinking it might to be a message from mr inference but as i read on i found that it was in fact a letter of commission the letter was from Arya miller one of the witnesses i met at the lonesome moon school for girls she once went by the name cleo and rendered invaluable aid during my investigation of the school Following the investigation's conclusion, I, at the time employed as a lady-in-waiting, left the school, only to later learn that Cleo, deemed to be of unsound mind, was whisked away by her parents and thereafter transferred elsewhere, after which I never received word from her again. The letter informed me of her inheritance of a library from her late grandfather, and her subsequent appointment as its director the following day. As the Azoth Library, her inherited property, has been shrouded in rumors of a curse for the past two years, she feels somewhat uneasy about the arrangement. She hopes to make an appointment for me to visit it in a week, entrusting me to uncover the truth behind the library's curse. The cursed Azoth Library, this isn't the first time such whisperings have reached my ears. Before Arya's arrival, I must begin gathering any and all pertinent materials. Interesting. So that means that Arya is um, Helena's pers uh, character. That is who Helena is going to be. So that's the only person I can think of. Ooh. And today is a uh, two. Well, well, technically today is Wednesday for me, so I think the new essence will be coming out. So we might have more story later on. Um, I'm going to try my best to record it tonight so that I can do the second day right away. But we will see what happens because I do work tomorrow. Anyways, it seems like that is it for this for now. And. Well, we'll see what happens as the story goes. And I'm very excited because this one is going to be, um, main, this one's main character is going to be Emma. So that's going to be exciting because it's been a while since she's had her own. It's usually inference. But now we have Lady Truth being the star of this story. So can't wait to see what happens and see if inference will show up or who knows who who else will see somebody new somebody old like who knows anyways thanks see you guys later bye